everybody. Welcome back to Adobe Live day two with Hoodspah. I am Amy Hood, your host of Hoodspah. And this is Jen Hood, your um, guest of Hoodspah. Yes, we have switched seats <laughs> or switched computers. Switch now computers. I'm in the design seat. Yeah, Jen will be designing today. We're continuing on with uh, our brand identity project for Green Room Beer, a fictitious beer company that we made up. Um, so we'll be working on some finishing up the logos, working on some can designs, that kind of thing. But hello in the chat. Um, if you're on YouTube, head on over to Behance. That's where we can actually see you in the chat and you're not just yelling into an echo chamber. Uh, and I mean, that's great sometimes, but uh, today we wanna hear you, we wanna talk. Don't so. scream into a pillow, scream with us in the other chat room. Yes. So um, yeah, we're working on a, a, a drink today. So what's your favorite drink in chat? Let us know, let us know where you're from, your favorite drink. Don't pick water, don't be boring. <laughs> we want flavors, flavors here. <laughs> um, but Jen, tell us a little bit about what you're gonna be working on today. So we cleaned up the logo yesterday, we picked a favorite and then today I'm gonna be applying it to cans, maybe a carrying case for like a six pack, Ooh, yeah. maybe a van, like a delivery van for the brewing mm -hmm. company, and then some coasters. We'll see what we have time for, but pretty much I'm just going to get through as much as I can. Awesome. Oh, and do type and color for the, like a brand guideline deck. Cool. That's going to be yeah. amazing. So we'll be on until around like 155. And then the schedule for the day um, is going to be, um, it's what's going to come up today after us doing brand and identity is going to be the XD Daily Creative Challenge at two with Andrea Epi. And then Kyle T. Webster is on with the uh, draw along, which is one of my favorites, 2.30. And then there will be the Creative Encore with Voodoo Val, who's awesome and we love. Um, and she'll be with Jetpacks and Roller Skates, who are also awesome. So definitely stay tuned after our segment. Um, but right now, Jen, tell us a little bit about Hoodspah. Okay, so Hoodspah, we started it 10 years ago, which is crazy. Almost I, 11, I think. No, right? we just verged on 10. Okay. This is our decade. What is that? Tin? Wood? Tell us what, we're, <laughs> yeah, tell us what that, that anniversary is. But anyways, if you go to my screen, I've got... Um, an example of one of our case studies that we did recently. This was for a company called Fanhood. It's a newsletter that's all about basketball at the, uh, the NBA. Um, and so we worked on the logo, the type, the color. Um, we've got a few secondary marks and badges for them. So this was a really fun one that we got to do. Um, this is a good example of a spacing guideline for a logo so that people know kind of um, what clear space to keep around the logo. Um, we got, and this is our case studies. We like to include a lot of context about, you know, the why and how of it. So people understand that we do strategy. We got the color, Absolutely. we got the type, we've got, you know, um, templates for social and newsletters. Uh, it was really fun to be able to work on this much for a client because the more you get to build something out, the more sure you are when you hand it over that the client will have the enough guidelines so that when they take it over with their team, it keeps the integrity of totally. what you all went for, right? Totally. And of course, illustration. We love illustration, so so that too. Uh, and then here's another project we did for Red Bull, which was for Road Trip USA, where they took an F1 car on a road trip, which would be the bumpiest ride ever. But it was probably it was great for photos though um so yeah, we the worked videos with, were incredible yeah we worked with road trip on that and here's a little bit of what we did for them but um yeah if you want to check out more about hutzpah uh hutzpahdesign.com or go over to our behance profile um anyways so yeah. that's who we are awesome yeah and uh we've got some amazing answers in the chat for people's favorite drinks oh, okay yes. so uh andrew hockrattle said uh chocolate milk and vodka what <laughs> ew <laughs> That's Andrew. like when you're 16 and you want a drink, but you don't know how to mix drinks yet. Totally. And you're it's like just... mixing it in your like kitchen in the middle of the night with your friends on a sleepover, you it's know? like vodka and Sunny D or something. But, but we are anyway. not condoning underage drinking. No. That's not, no. no. Mm -hmm. But hey, to Stuart Dooley, Jessica Tam. Jessica Tam is worried that you're not wearing your glasses. How will they tell us apart? I had to wear my glasses yesterday to read the chat on the screen, but now I'm looking close up. So we're good. We're good. Yeah. Um, but hey to everyone in chat. Eric Sue's here, who's always, always tuning in. We love Eric. Um, Rafiz. Oh, hey, Rafiz what's up oh my gosh it's like 3 a.m where he is um hello and welcome and to all you night owls across the world thank you for tuning in yes um david jarman so many awesome people in here so um we're going to start out and we're going to jump into illustrator right we're yeah. going to finish up the logos that we worked on a little bit yesterday yeah and just kind of um dial them in a bit yeah so this is kind of where we left off yesterday with our rough concepts it's funny how we when when i looked at them with fresh eyes after we got off the stream i was like wow i see everything that we need to fix totally but the concepts were really solid i was so impressed with what we got done in two hours but you do you have to walk away and let it marinate and let it marinate so last night i worked on cleaning up the type from yesterday, you can see on the left, this is where we left off yesterday. And um, this is the cleaned up version that I have that we're gonna work from today. Um, so I've just, and I've got an, ex I've kind of highlighted some points just to show Ooh. you what I cleaned up. Oh, I love this. So <laughs> teach you see, us. Yeah, yesterday, 
Um, this area was a little too thick. Um, and then we didn't really have a, like a little crossbar here to really make this read a little bit more like a G. So I wanted to fix that. Um, and then this descended a little bit lower than this baseline. So I wanted to pull that up. Uh, the E's to me felt like they were leaning a little bit on the, the counter, the inside was leaning a little too far to the right. Mm -hmm. um, and then the N's and the M's just got a little too funky. Uh, so I just wanted to clean those up just a little bit. And then this R just needed a little smoothing on that leg. Totally. Um, and then the O's, get, the O's and the E's, I, I got them a little bit wider to kind of feel a little bit more roomy and open, kind of like these uh, capital letters. Yeah, you want that negative space in your counters to feel, you know, equal to the volume between the, the letters, like everything, you're looking at volume overall and making yeah. sure everything feels really even and nicely spaced out. So yeah, amazing notes. It is absolutely an improvement. So yeah. good job. And to be honest, like this still needs work. So if any of you are looking at me like, I still seen some stuff, don't worry. I do too, but we are running out of time and I want to get to doing other stuff. Viola O approves. She says nice cleanup. Oh, good. Okay. But Thank also you. somebody is saying that we have to try fizzy chocolate milk. And now I am just, I need to know. But who is it? It sounds amazing. Remember fizzy, um, uh, what, wait, fizzy chocolate milk. Okay, there was also warming up Coca Cola, and people do that for Christmas, and they like add spices that and stuff. That blows my mind. Yeah, and they put like red wine in it. I don't know about that. Oh, <laughs> well, it's amazing. Anyways, okay, so what? What's I'm up gonna... to Ricky Haggerty? Um, yeah, another person we interact with sometimes on uh, social. So it's it's good to see some familiar faces in here. Stephen Overturf in the house. What's up? But my favorite drink is hands down, if we're not talking about like water, it's hands down Coca-Cola. I love, and not diet. <laughs> Take oh. your diet and stay you where the sun so don't shine. Rude. Every time we go out, people assume by the way we look that we want diet. <laughs> yeah. Every time I go to like a diner, I'm like, I'll have a patty melt and a Coke. And they're like, do you want diet Coke? Or they'll does, bring me a diet Does patty melt say I want diet? That's what I don't get. Who, but it's kind of like those people who uh, drink diet Coke, but then they drink like a six pack a day of diet Coke. Yeah. To me, it feels okay, like that might be, this. you know. Um, so I already pathfindered these used to just be shapes, but I already pathfindered out the nice. negative space at least because I'm going to be placing this on top of color and stuff. So I need to um, get this all clean. And if you see, there's still a bunch of overlaps. I'm just going to, for our purposes, just going to pathfinder it all together um, because cool. it's pretty close. Nice, clean. Nice, clean. So Pass what I want to do way. is I want to make a really long horizontal version um, because I think that'll be handy to have for the client, like especially at the top of a website where surprisingly this could get a little, a little, too, know, a little too tall. tall. And for think about the semis that are gonna deliver our beer to oh, like semis. Stater Brothers or Vons oh, or Wegmans. Right. We want that to be big, large, in charge, and this is perfect. Branding a semi oh. is a dream. Okay, so we've got that. And I, I really worked hard last night on getting the proportions right so that when I put those next to each other, it would go as easy as it nice. just went. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it looks just effortless, Jen. You're, you're killing it. So, and then of course, we got to do a little icon because we actually abandoned all of our icons and we went with a word mark instead, which, right. which I love. The word mark is so custom that I don't think it matters. Like it, it, it almost has that iconic look to it. Right. So, but I want to make at least a GR monogram that we can use on smaller instances, like maybe bottle caps if we're doing bottles. Um, and then also maybe even... Um, you know, for avatars or favicons. Yeah, you want to have something on social media that's short enough and that fits well and is going to be big enough for legibility purposes. Yeah. And like, if you even think about Coca-Cola, they've, you know, they have those amazing it, um, websites where it shows you like the long Coca-Cola, the short Coke, and the even smaller little uh, wavy line only, and then the tiniest like bottle outline. So it's cool to see how um, a logo can scale and fit every purpose. Yeah. Oh, I like how this is looking. Yeah, that looks good. Um. I mean, we're done. There done. Is. <laughs> Do you think though, it's almost like I want an underlined feel to it. Okay. I'm actually going to steal an underline and add one here. Tell me what you think. Chat, help me. Be my art director. I need gut instincts. And hello to Zach Wilkinson. He says, <gasps> y'all are, he says, y'all are pretty good at this. <laughs> Zach, I hope <laughs> after however many years, we met Zach at uh, Creative South and he has podcasts. He has all sorts of fun things that he's doing. He makes these beautiful shibori dyed um, uh, handkerchiefs that I got to do some brand identity work for. It's called Die by the Sea and it's so fun. Um, but yeah, we have a lot of uh, Creative South friends in here. Um, Brian Patterson says, I live in North Carolina and frying chicken and Dr. Pepper is a common thing over here. I smell like KFC and DP collab in the future. <laughs> okay, Brian, have you seen the KFC and Hallmark collab or was it Lifetime? Lifetime. Lifetime. They did a Lifetime Christmas movie, Love Story. 
with Colonel Sanders and Mario Lopez plays Colonel Sanders. Oh my gosh. And the cover is like him like holding yes. this woman, but he's dressed as Colonel Sanders, but with his sleeves rolled up. So his biceps show. So it's funny. It's hilarious. And honestly, it's very, up. how did they know what I wanted? It's very up my alley. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying though? Like I like how that kind of better mimics the, um, the underlines, the underlines? Yeah. by adding it. And I think it's okay that this one is sharp and this one is curved, but I will how do you say, feel? I think on the right-hand side, I think you could pull in the the G's um, stroke and the underline of the R a little okay. bit. So then, then it goes space. Yeah. All right, so we'll pull this one in a little too. Nice. And just a T, not a whole, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there that we looks go. Good. That looks good, that looks super even. All right. This is kind of giving me Aldi vibes. Is that the one or is it Food Lion? I'm thinking Food Lion, how there's like the lines and the tails of the lion all come out and make this great little kind of encompassing shape. That's cool. Yeah, I love it. But yeah, on a van or something, we could extend that, um, that turn into a racing stripe pretty much. You know? I love that. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's good. Okay. And just a reminder to everybody who's over on YouTube chat, if you're on YouTube, hop on over to Behance. That's where we all are. And that's where you can actually chat with us and we'll see what you're saying. And we want to see what you're saying. Okay. So next I'm going to pick, if we're going to be working on, you know, collateral and things like that, the biggest thing that I have to figure out next is type and color. Yes. So, because once I have those things, and if you're working on your personal branding and you're like stuck, if you just figure out what your type and color is and, you know, have your logo, your type and your color, even if your logo is just typeset and a beautiful typeface, that is enough to help you build things out quickly, especially for social media graphics, shareables, newsletters, so that you're not constantly reinventing the wheel every time yeah. you want to, you know, promote something. Totally. So that's what I want to do next is pick some type and some color. So I guess first, what would be easiest would be to pick color because type can be tough. So I'm just going to make some circles. Oh, you do circles. I do bars. For yeah. Color. It just depends. <laughs> I don't know. Right now I'm filling circles. All right, for sure we have to have green. It's just obvious. Green room. Green. And I always You know what's so funny is it didn't even occur to me yesterday to use green. <laughs> but I think that's because I'm so outside of the box. Okay. You're so counterculture in your in, in your gap sweater. <laughs> this is this is uh this is a known supply sweater and it's uh, ethically made and sourced and it's actually our friend Cole's company and it's an amazing company. Known supply. You should check it out. Um, but huge thanks to Voodoo Val, who is our um, our moderator today. Uh, she's an incredible moderator, and she was just on it like Johnny Rocket uh, with the uh, links yesterday, and it was amazing. So, Robzilla's in the house. Okay, Robzilla is a legend. Can legend we just say there. it? He's a legend. Um, legend. If you want to see the most amazing illustration work you've ever seen, just check out Robzilla's work. It's absolutely insane. Okay, I know this is just expected but at the same time it feels right i'm just gonna say that um to have green <laughs> i love that a water teal and something that refers to the sun or the sand like yeah it feels yummy it feels bright and here's the thing our goal yesterday in our discovery was to we want it to pop out we want it to be bright vivid appealing to younger yes. people um not underage people but people of drinking age up to like 35 yes we want it to really stand out as something that's exciting and accessible to them so this is why i'm not going for the normal like oh heritage feel we already have the retro feel in the low Logo, which I love. I want the color to be a little bit brighter. And there's nothing, these are actually still nostalgia heritage feel. They I really think are. because they have just a little bit of like um, uh, black in them. Yeah. Right. It, so it's true. like on your sliders, I like to take my bright color, I'll pick a swatch and then I'll add a little bit of black, a little bit of K in there. And I do think it just tones it down a teensy bit in a nice way. Get it away from this thing into the, you know, where you can adjust the little thing. I'm not going to bother with it now. I'm on Amy's computer. So <laughs> I'm like, what, where am I? <laughs> Uh, it's like being in an escape room while you're trying to design. Okay. <laughs> but these are I like beautiful. these colors. I'm and of course black. Always. Also, chat, tell us if we're talking too fast. We have a tendency. We are from Southern California, so just let us know. We'll we'll dial it back about, you know, 1.5. So I like to do when I'm testing. Let's see what that's am I testing my color? Ricky Haggerty says make it pink and and have people second guess everything they've ever thought about which colors are which. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, don't fit us into your gender stereotypes. Love it. Let's make this pink. I love that idea. Actually, that's we could. What I want to do is have a palette that could be help these the client green room who we made up. But so that when they do create different beers and different varietals, they can apply a color coding to each beer can. That kind of a I love that. Yeah, emits the vibe. So if we did have a pink one, it could be like maybe like a grapefruit sculpin or something. You oh know? yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so actually, like I am going to do a pink. Thank you. Good idea. 
But I do love that idea of having each can potentially be a different color. That's a great way, especially since we're a beer company. This isn't just one one um, draft or brew. Yeah. We're going to have all sorts of different brews. So, so in that way, maybe green is our like brand color. Green and black, those sure. are our like main brand the colors. The primary colors. The primary one. And then we have a secondary palette for um, that goes along with that, but is for um, the beer varietals. So I'm thinking that that brand green could be for like a West Coast IPA. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Um, because IPAs are hoppy and to me that rich green feels hoppy in that kind of bitter way that IPAs have that flavor and then um this kind that, of that's like kind of clean and crisp that could be the pilsner oh yeah pilsner or a, like a belgian white yeah oh belgian pilsner. white yeah or a belgian oh, i love a white ale yeah like a ho garden a ho garden mm. <laughs> i think you're right a pilsner, pilsner? okay because this then, could be the yeah the belgian white probably should be more of like this tan the gold color. yeah all right, so I'm starting to color code. So this is a great way for me to then convince my client this color system is right because it matches the beer varietals yeah. they're going to be offering. So again, I'm adding like um, something that's objective to what would other advice just be subjective color picking. Because and you know, Nikki Cousin makes a great point in the chat. I envision pink for a white ale or a saison, and it mm -hmm. also plays on the sunset at the beach. So you're you're taking in all the things that were in the discovery, these buzzwords that your client has told you that they love and that they want this brand to embody. And you're making sure you're bringing those words and those goals back into your proof decks and showing how the design decisions that you made completely and fully embody the goals that we had at the beginning. So you're constantly reiterating and reminding and tying back with the words that your client has given you. So always, always, always listen to your clients, open those ears, hear the buzzwords that they're saying a lot and use those when you present things back to them. They will feel like they've been heard and that's huge. I guess it, Voodoo Val says Belgian white is my go-to. Oh, I love Val. Belgian whites. The Allagash Belgian white is oh. my jam. Once we're done and if we're ever in the same state, let's get some Let's get some Belgian whites together. <laughs> okay, so those are kind of the colors so far. And right now you're thinking what's going on, but I have a vision, don't worry. Okay, so I'm gonna, for the color page, what I would usually do then would be to kind of drag all these logos and show them in the different colorways because it's just so pretty. And I find that it's a really fun uh, page. Clients usually respond to this page really well when we show that logo in all the different colorways of the palette um, on one page. Absolutely. And it ensures that you're showing the client how to use their color system. A lot mm -hmm. of times they'll pair, if you just give them the colors, they'll pair the colors, let's just say it wrongly. <laughs> they'll do things that clash, that don't, they don't have enough contrast. So when you lay out a color page like this, you're saying, hey, these things go together. And sometimes I even put together a color page that says, don't do this. There's not enough contrast. Yeah. So I'm really letting them know like, hey, here's how to use this to the most success. Actually, I'm going to bring in that vertical one. Anti-Pixel Type Studio says, love that palette. Thanks, Anti-Pixel. Oh, thank you. I think we are breaking the beer norms, which I like. That's what we were trying to do, but we were also trying to make it something accessible. So this totally. doesn't feel, you know, scary. If anything, it's like, oh, that looks delicious. Oh, I could see tap handles already. Are you seeing it? Oh yeah, that's, oh, that's great. I love designing tap handles. That is one of the funnest things because it's so tactile. There's all the opportunities to bevel, emboss, you know, like all these different materials Especially you can Especially if you're working with a product designer. And I say product designer in the traditional sense of making a physical product. <laughs> Not, no offense to all the UI UX designers out there. Love y'all too. But um, if you're working with a product designer where you actually have a lot of uh, flexibility on, um, materials and yeah materials like you're actually gonna work with them to define your own design for yeah. the shape you're not just working with like you know an off the off the market kind of a thing totally we got to do that with a client called docent brewing here and it was by hands down one of my favorite projects so fun I kind of okay this idea of doing kind of like oh tonal tonal gradations oh i kind of like that like monochromatic but tonal mm -hmm. but you know what i'm thinking what about like brighter navy i do like the retro but like like okay. leaning into the blue more like cerulean maybe even is that crazy that yeah okay yeah bit purple isn't it yeah it's a bit purple but i like where that's going I wish I could yeah get those color bars where i can like adjust the cmyk better zach beckman is just giving a bunch of hard eyes he, he he's really digging it okay yay so if you go to color and go to that hamburger icon so go to color yeah and go to hamburger icon um see i don't show options there it is yeah. Haha, -ha, I know how to work with these. <laughs> Sorry, you all. We are professionals. We We've are professionals. So funny. All right. And like Nikita Prokhorov says, one of my favorite pages to work on in a branding manual is how not to use logos. Oh my gosh, oh my it's gosh. so funny. Nikita, it's the most fun. And 
it's, I always have our, our uh, designer, Arturo Jimenez, shout out to Arturo. We would be lost without him, but uh, he always, I always give him that page to do. I'm like, break this, break this in every way possible. And I'm always, I'm always really impressed with what he comes up with on how this could go wrong. It's, it's honestly, it's impressive. Voodoo Val says a little bit more Navy on that blue. I know I wasn't liking it more, less of the magenta. Yes, you're right. Voodoo Val, as always. Your taste is impeccable. We're sorry for what's just happened. <laughs> if you're hearing a little bit of noise, uh, it's just there's gardeners outside and road construction all at once. So it's. I'm so sorry. Well, don't worry, we can talk loud. And then I want so, this to be kind of like a ruby. Oops, I keep. Or what, I'm what saying? if you know what I actually think on the pink? What if you do an orange, like a really bright, really? Oh, that's beautiful though. But something like that, where we're getting more into like. Yeah, I love that. That's really beautiful. And on the black, you know the green on the black? I know, Rifka, I'm so sorry about this lawnmower. What what in the world? Horrible timing for this. I city. know, I'm so sorry. But um on this green on black option, Jen, to me that feels a little too monster energy drink. Okay, so let's make it a green. I almost think for the black one, I think you do off-white on black. Like have an option, and that can still be white, I think. Like an ecru, maybe. Cause I don't think there's enough contrast there. Right. Lady Boss says, love it so far though. Thank you so much. This is, it's definitely getting there. Well, something like this, Yeah. but it, that is subject to the change. So let's kind of keep going and see. I'm gonna kind of just start applying it and see if that's even close to what okay. would look good. You know what I mean? Yeah, start might, applying uh, it on the cans. Yeah, I'm just gonna try and do a can design and see if it actually looks like I am thinking it might. Okay. <laughs> But I am thinking still, I want to see that bright orange instead of that red on the pink, but that's just my opinion and we'll see oh, how it goes. Oh, on the pink. Yeah, on the pink. Yeah. Like that? Yes. Yeah, I like that. That's what so, I like. Whoops. Yep, I love that. Zach Wilkinson says, that's not your laptop, fans? <laughs> not yet. <laughs> not yet. No, yeah, you're right. That feels way more appropriate. Actually, that needs to be a little more. Yes, that's getting there. And I think this needs a little more black. Darker, maybe? No, it's good, right? Yeah, okay. that looks good. All right, we're getting there. Okay, so I'm liking that enough to where I'm just going to keep, again, I'm just going to keep moving forward because okay. I could obsess over that and go back and forth for about an hour. So let's think about a can design. Let me pull in my can mock-up so I know generally what size I'll be designing for. All right. that. Okay. I'm just going to kind of guesstimate for now and then I can place it in. This is actually a mock-up. So once I'm done, I'll, I'll but I'm going to work with my designable area for now. I like that idea, especially because I, you know, if I don't want the fans to turn on too loud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So we were talking about a West Coast IPA. And we want to make sure, like we talked about yesterday, we want it to have like a bold color swash. Because if you remember on our discovery deck, and you can watch that video from yesterday, but on our discovery deck, we found that almost every beer can in our competitive landscape was on a white can or like a silver, the base of the can. So we want to make sure whatever we do, it stands out from that. And I think a great way to do that is a big, bold color swatch. So we're definitely going to work with bold colors. And then we're going to see how our type works out, but we want to try vertical, horizontal, or vertical, vertical orientation. Um, and I think that's going to really make us stand out from the competition. So this is usually how I do my um, type pages and whether or not it's for the actual like proof deck or eventually for their brand guidelines. Um, I'm just going to type these out in any typeface for now. And then later on, we'll apply whatever we figure out will actually be our, our type. Um, but um, I kind of define you know, what these different things would be. So I'm just gonna get it set up and ready. And luckily when you pull a um, text box, now Illustrator fills it with copy, um, placeholder copy, which is really cool. Yeah, that is great. So you don't have to grab that Lorem Ipsum anymore. Yeah. 
And Brian Patterson asks, this might have been answered yesterday, but do you have a specific place to go to for mockup files? Um, there's a lot of great mockup file sites. We use something called uh, Yellow Image, I think is what it's called. Mm, there's that. Um, Creative Market. Creative great. Market has some. And then also, I think Adobe Stock also. Oh, they um, have them now. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So, yeah, there's all sorts of. <laughs> and then you can do stuff in Adobe Dimension too, where you can make your own and stuff. Adobe yeah. Dimension's incredible. I still need to like get the hang of it, but I started working on a can label a couple weeks ago and I was in Dimension and it, you want to talk about realistic mock ups, it's incredible. So, definitely check that out. So I'm just going to copy and paste all of this. Sorry for the down here because we're going to use some form of these. I don't know what yet. So we had talked about going up the side of the can, right? Yeah. Okay. I love that. I'm going to try this one because I have a feeling if we do this one, it's going to be too, like this one actually looks great like that. You're right. It works. It's actually the perfect width the horizontally. Perfect width. And you could even do it a little bit more. So it kind of wraps around the can Ooh. just the teensiest bit, like you, you know, carry these lines around. Oh, oh, damn. oh, I like that. It doesn't get our brief, <laughs> but I do like it. So Ooh, yeah, we do have to try that. Absolutely. We do have to try it, which what are our feelings on adjusting a logo for a package? Like we are modifying technically, you know, we could do I think it's leave fine. this the same, but then carry on the line. Oh, with a different color. At least, um, you know, I like have a break. I'll do. <laughs> I keep trying to just yeah, like, like a yourself. break. Exactly. Sarah Pronio says, I'm obsessed with dimension. The mock-ups look so good. I know they're yeah. incredible. It's like you could reach out into your screen and pull it out. Totally. All right. Let's see here. Uh, and then I'm just going to do this. Okay. So now I have like an extra line. So I'm not, I'm not manipulating the logo itself. Okay. Oops, let me just get rid of that. Cause technically you're not supposed to, we, we tell them all the things not to do on the logo page, you know, where it's like, what not to do, right. don't stretch it, don't add to it. And I almost added to it. <laughs> so we, a lot of branding is literally just practicing restraint. You want to do a lot because yeah. you're a good designer, but you have to think about all the people who are going to touch it after you. And you have to remember, um, I can't take liberties that I would not allow another designer to take. <laughs> so there we go. And what kind of information are you going to want to keep on your can? Like what kind of stuff are you planning room yeah. for? Yeah. So I looked it up last night and I was looking up like some legal things that would probably have to be included on ours. And this is a great thing to consider too, when you have a client, if you're working on packaging of any type, or especially with food and beverage, where you've got the FDA involved and things like that. And right. especially with an alcohol beverage where there are legal ramifications, you're going to want to ask your client to send you specs. Those are specifications, which they should have from no, their legal, legal team. This is not on you as the designer. You want to make sure that all of the legal onus is on your client who's going to ask their legal team, what specs do we have to include on our can to be up to code? And then you're also going to want to, then, to make sure they send you any UPC codes or, or things like that that are required for them so that they can, you know, sell it in grocery stores, liquor stores, you know, wherever it is. Because the worst thing is when you present an idea, you've got this whole design, it's beautiful, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. And then you haven't, you've forgotten to include all this important information that has to be included for it to go to market. And then of course, everybody's disappointed because now, you know, the expectation of what it was going to be has now been broken. Yeah. So you want to make sure you're setting expectations at the beginning. Um, you don't want to need disappointments like that, that are going to throw the client off. I honestly don't think it would be a bad thing if you continued that line on. Really? I don't. Well, anyways, I really don't. We could. Okay. But I do want to try it the vertical way. Yeah, I do too. Because I think we can do two at the same time. Well, definitely let's, option drag and let's, let's go for it. Because you're right. Um, everyone does it this way. Right. So why not at least try? Exactly. David Jarman says, OMG, this is so important. I recently did a job that had about 10 revisions because the legal info was incorrect. Client's fault, they paid for it. But obviously it just, it sours the relationship a bit. And honestly, half the battle of working with clients is making sure that the trust is there. Mm -hmm. That when you suggest um, an idea, they trust you enough to say, you know what? I know you're for me. I know you know your industry. I know you know what's best let's do it instead of fighting you at every turn. So yeah, always making sure you're asking them the questions that they don't even know to ask or provide, you know, so you don't know what you don't know. So always make sure that you're, you're setting up the client for, for success and not failure. Let's do a West coast IPA, which has got a little bit of citrus and floral notes to it. Um, I can't do an IPA, but can you, do you drink it? Yeah. No, but that's the color code we gave to this. I'll never drink this thing, but I'll design it. Okay. That's amazing. So right now I'm just using Myriad, 
which I'd like to know, has anyone ever used Myriad in, oh, in a brand project? I'm dying to know. I'm waiting. Did anyone just set it in default and was like, that looks great. Yeah. Um, I'm just waiting for um, land boys to do what they did for Hobo for Myriad. Ooh. Let's, let's bring Myriad but back. it was Hobo new. It was, right. it was a revival new. of Hobo. Hobo new. So right. I don't know if you can. All right. What would an IPA alcohol content be? Something like 5%, right? Yeah. 8%, per, 8% I think. 20%. <laughs> okay, 5% alcohol. I looked this up by last night. Alcohol by volume. Okay, so these are two things I know have to be on the front of the can. We have to have this the uh, volume of it as far as like the ounces, and then we have to have the alcohol content. Okay, so those are two things we got to include. This is something that I want to include in our packaging, and this is what I love about doing uh, labeling and packaging. I like to think about what I wish was on packaging. So when I, especially when I'm looking for wine and for beer, um, I always want to know what is the flavor? What does it taste like? Like I want someone to explain it to me and they don't usually have that on the labels. Yeah. So what if we included a little bit of descriptor text on this, you know, that, or at least like little notes about, you know, the, the, uh, the flavor the profiles. Flavor profiles. Yeah. Exactly. Because a lot of times, it's like especially for me when I'm picking wines, I have no idea. I have no idea, but I know I like something um, a little bit sweet, um, you know, and I don't like it too um, too dry. So it's like I know those things. So if I if that was on the label, I'd easily be able to pick out a wine aside from just picking it out based on the cool labels, right? So I think that's a really cool idea. So like maybe we even just write a sentence, you know? And I, again, I'm not formatting yet. I'm just getting all the info I need on the page. Um, okay, so we would need that. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. For Colby Clyte says tasting notes. That's what they're called. Yes, tasting, tasting notes. notes. Yes. Okay, so we would need to include those things. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we could do it like these two ways. Okay. So let me start trying to pick a font. So I think this would actually be the second biggest thing, and we'll figure out. Okay, the cool thing about Illustrator is that it will preview in your dropdown, not only your fonts, but if you wanna find more fonts um, that you haven't even synced to your computer yet through um, Adobe Fonts, all the ones that they offer, you can go to find more fonts here and it's gonna show you um, all of the potential uh, typefaces that you could sync through Adobe Fonts. And there are so many, and you can actually preview your text. So um, I'm kind of looking through here and seeing so we obviously need something kind of chunky. Like, yeah. Um, and the thing is too, is you have to consider that you can drop these down and there's all kinds of different weights as well. Something like that could work. I mean, there is something very industrial about it, you know, um, where, okay, let's use that for an example. So once we're ready and we want to sync it, we can just use this little cloud icon um, or we could do the whole family up here, which I don't need the whole family. I don't want to slow my whole computer down. Let's just do extra bold for now. now okay. I'm actually gonna check for some reason that our, we're losing like power on this laptop so fast. I'm just gonna check that it's plugged in properly. Okay. Yeah, something like that. But then I have to actually, uh, once it syncs, it might take a few minutes to sync here or a few seconds. All right, that was active, grotesque, bold. Did it sync? Okay, there we go. So we could use that for that. And then I need something a little bit less for my, what just, you just, oh, oh no. Jim, just hold on. Are we still there? Uh, let me see, how do I get back to meeting? Sorry, he told me to do that because we were. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to get back into that Zoom meeting. So sorry. Oh, are we good? We're back live. Are we on? <laughs> okay. Good. I'm so sorry. I was like, what's? Okay, we're going. Perfect. Sorry, everybody. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the Minor for, panic attack. For some reason, okay. our we were losing power quickly, so I had to just change our outlet real quick. But thank you for hanging in there with us. All right, so we've got some type picked. Okay. Got some type picked. Okay. Cool. I'm like, I told you this would happen. Colby Clyde <laughs> says, uh, yep, you're still alive. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Guys. Sorry, Henry. We're so sorry about that. Just minor communication breakdown here. Okay, so we could put the West Coast IPA up here. 
That's a good tip. It's a little boring though. So Nikita Prokhorov asks, uh, what is your process for defining and then copywriting the voice for a brand that you're developing? So usually um, a lot of clients come and they've already hired a copywriter or maybe they've done a little bit of, um, of those brand exercises for themselves. Um, but sometimes we do get hired to do uh, voice and messaging. And usually that's because of Jen, because Jen's so funny. Um, <laughs> but when we do, um, we do the same thing that we did yesterday in our discovery, which was uh, figuring out which um, adjectives match the brand, figuring out the brand personality by saying like, what are we and what aren't we? So when it comes to, um, and I think that they can see your screen. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm just going to look on Adobe Stock for some uh, oh, water images. So yesterday we defined, okay, what, uh, for example, Green Room Brewing is, it's approachable. It's, um, I think we said it's nostalgic um, with a modern twist. And so we want to make sure that the the words that we're using, the copy that we're using also feels that way. So uh, we would make sure that we're inviting, we're approachable. We use relaxed language probably, right? We're not going to say, um, uh, this is this beer has been uh, barrel aged for 20 years. We're probably not going to do any of that. We're going to say, you know, quality beer, um, great price. You know, we're going to do things more like how in and out does it, um, where it's like quality you can taste, um, but you know, at a, at a price point that won't break the bank, you know? Right. So you're, you're trying to bring in those adjectives that you've defined in the discovery, even into the copy. So it's all about setting your, your adjectives and your, your voice and personality at the get-go, because that'll, that'll kind of define everything from there. Mm -hmm. Harvey Fonda says, they must have chainsawed your power line. I'm pretty sure that's what happened. I'm like, we were just losing power so quickly. I'm like, <gasps> what's happening? Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to open Photoshop, and I'm going to play around with some like imagery that's kind of abstract enough to where um, we could just apply some like texture to it and it would be more of like a feeling and a vibe than, um, you know, than anything else. It doesn't okay. have to be, you know, exact. So this will allude to the name, which is uh, about waves and surfing and stuff. So I like I this because yeah, it almost looks like a painting and it's really weird and it, it but it's not green enough. It, it has to be greener. So I want to try and let's see, I want to try and do some, stuff to it okay so i'm going to double click the layer i want to add a gradient overlay and i want to play around with this and see let's see let's go some like so while you're working on that i'm going to answer some questions in the chat okay okay so uh ae asks what is your guys process on designing a pattern for a brand it's so funny like i always want to do a pattern but it so rarely is needed in the instance that we're working within um, but when we do, obviously like a go-to is always like, what about, you know, the icon, does that work repeated potentially? I usually don't like to go that route because I like, I like when the logo is used, I want it to have impact. I want it to have oomph and I want it to really stand out. So I, I rarely do that, even though that's kind of like the obvious go-to. Um, but other patterns that, you know, you could consider are, um, you know, for example, this is a beer company and it's, it's having to do with California and Southern California. So maybe we come up with some sort of like wave pattern. Maybe we come up with some sort of like sand grain pattern. We're thinking of things that will elevate the brand and add something, add something that creates contrast to the logo when it's used. Um, but also blends harmoniously and doesn't take too much away. I find a lot of people get a little too busy with patterns sometimes. Um, you're gonna wanna make sure like your your logo is a thing, it's the star, you know? Oh, so, Blur. but this is cool. What are, you, what are you doing in here? I'm thinking we could add a little blur to it. Let's see, is it doing anything? Yeah. Oh, that's cool, I like that. So just and, a little blur, did it actually do enough? Oh yeah, I think so. Okay, and then maybe even like a grain. I love a grain. Yeah, I add noise to every photo. <laughs> I'm know, like, it's like give me noise. some noise, give me some grain, give me some grit. Too much noise. <laughs> Chris Porter says patterns. Chris, do they actually ask you to do patterns? It's so rare that I can. It's like usually I'll I'll give a pattern to a client and then we never use it. We never have anywhere to put it. You know, it's like unless you're doing like tissue paper for maybe like mailing mailing instances or something. I just so rarely find like a good use for it. Rachel Miller asks, what is your process um, in designing a new typeface? I love Lone Pine, by the way. Lone Pine is one of our, our fonts that we, we sell on Hoods, but it's like a reverse contrast, super funky, weird looking thing that I love. Um, but usually my process for a typeface starts with just doing some fun type just for like a fun side project or for a client. Uh, and it's something that maybe didn't get used, but I love and I don't want to see it die. 
And um, so I usually say, oh, this is a great start. Like I already have, you know, seven to 10 characters built. Like, what does this look like if I build out, you know, all the caps? And if I like all the caps, then, you know, I'll start building out maybe even a lowercase. Um, but I usually start by just doing things for fun. Uh, maybe it's just like some fan art or something like that. And, um, and then, you know, building it out from there once I've seen that it kind of works. And also once I've posted it and seen like if, what the response is from, you know, my audience, it's like, if no one's interested, then I don't want to waste 1000 to 2000 <laughs> hours building this thing that no one will buy. So funny. it's pretty funny. Chris Porter says, haha, nope. I never get asked for patterns. I always just have to include it and have to convince clients that it's a good use. Totally. Yes, 100%. I'm, I'm always trying to convince them that they need it, but then it's so rare that I'm able to find like the right application. So, but uh, I do love a good pattern when, if you find a good use for it. By the way, I think I'm going to use Degular as far as the type. I really like this uh, typeface by Ono Type Co. Uh, it's a sans serif, but it's got a lot of personality and it's got that kind of... Um, extreme thick and thin it's got some some nice um I like that it wraps and stuff yeah. yeah I like it that it has a little bit of character like it's not just your typical what you would expect like maybe like Helvetica which right everybody loves Helvetica but it's like what's something a little bit unique yeah All right. yeah I so love let's that. start and I went in doubt with typefaces try with one family first because it's like if you can do a really good layout with one family just using different weights and different you know um styles within that family it'll make it look really consistent consistent but then you can try and introduce other typefaces that might be you know complimentary after that j mark bowden says food wrappers for sure that's a great place to use patterns not to not to go back to them <laughs> but i agree picking typefaces can be really tough and it's something that i still have trouble with and so i always say like limit it to one if then bring in two if you can do that that's awesome um but yeah nikita prokhorov says has a bit more character is that a typographic pun <laughs> I didn't, I can't even, it is, and yes. I didn't even mean to. I I can't see or hear puns. I they don't register with me. You know what? I want some sort of a badge, which Andrew Hawkrattle just did a great creative challenge on making a badge. But nice. I want something that adds a little bit of like warmth and like it almost. You know how badges when you see them for some reason they allude to quality. You're just like, oh, this looks craft. Totally. Which remember the the craft craze of uh, what would it have been like 2016? 2010. <laughs> But I think it still applies for food and beverage for sure, where you want to know like, okay, this is quality ingredients. Like I want to say a little bit about the company and we can use a badge to do that. Okay. So maybe it's like family recipes. Ooh, I love that. Cause that's approachable. Yep. Quality ingredients. For sure. Oh my, I don't know. Something like that. Okay. Ooh, family recipes. I want it to be something that's like friendly and approachable made for friends. So I here are that. friends. So, okay, I like wow. those. And then we need some sort of a thing that's like, um, like cheers to better waves or something like that. I was thinking something but, like, um, oh, good suds, good sets. Oh, that's, or something like okay. that. Cause it's like suds for beers, sets for, oh. for waves. Or it's like good waves, good suds. I don't know if suds is cheesy. Suds could be real cheesy. It reminds me of spuds, <laughs> like potatoes. It's like, has any surfer ever said, no. hey man, hey, let's get some good suds, suds out there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but we're talking about suds is beer. That's right. <laughs> it still true. doesn't work. But it's, yeah. Okay, how has about... any beer guy or girl ever said like, give me a cold suds, let the, man. Let the good sets roll. <gasps> let the good sets roll. That is Jen. That's and good. Sets Sometimes inspiration strikes. Okay, because happens, it alludes yeah. to partying, <laughs> but also to surfing. Okay, okay, we're getting somewhere. Okay, and I, I like want... that it alludes to a um, song too, because green room is also the the room that the the rock and rollers wait in before they go on stage. So mm -hmm. there's something cool about that That's too. True. Regular, well, and you can see I'm oscillating between degular text, which is more legible. There's less um, extremes in the thick and thins. And so that's easier to read at smaller variation or smaller iterations. And then regular degular is kind of like more medium sized uh, instances. And then degular display is for large instances. So actually for this West Coast IPA where it's larger, I want to use degular display because it'll go even more um, extreme on those thicks and thins, which okay. I like. Love that. I want it. Actually, let me make sure. Yeah, I love more. that. We'll go to. I'm liking where this is going because the uh, the logo is a little bit nostalgic, but this feels very of the now, you know. So mm -hmm. there's something kind of cool about this that that blend of like, like we said, it's nostalgic but with a twist, and this definitely has a twist. Definitely a twist. Yeah, I like this. 
Uh, AE and Zach Wilkinson ask, have you guys studied business? Not, not necessarily in the classical way as like, I didn't go to Harvard Business School, <laughs> but we had so many amazing mentors that helped us when we were just first starting out um, our business hoods by like 10 years ago. And um, it's amazing how if you just listen and you ask good questions and I mean, a lot of it was just going to Twitter meetups with designers that we really admired and business people that we even admire that have nothing to do with design and just mm -hmm. listening and asking questions. Yep. And but not too many questions. Right. There's a limit to people's generosity. And I, I find the handiest thing is to listen as much as possible, yeah. see what they say, and then use your questions wisely. Absolutely. Google yeah. as much as you can when you get home. We, I will ask as many questions as I want to Google. But um, at some point, people get tired of Google. <laughs> Is that rude? <laughs> no, I mean, I think, it's a, I think it's a good point that you can overwhelm people. So it's like, if you really want to know somebody's opinion, tell them what you're doing. And they'll yes. say, don't, oh no, don't do that. It is a reverse way to ask a question. It's just to say, I'm doing this, you yeah. know? Yeah. And you're kind of saying, what do you think? You're right. Know? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Totally. But having said that, I love when people ask me questions. So you can never exhaust me on questions, but I know, you know. No, I that just, is good. You want to respect people that are giving you their time and their knowledge. I think that's amazing. Okay. And this is the quickest way to make, make a badge, you all. It's this easy. You just go type warp arc. Wait, where is it? Object. <laughs> I know where it is. Text warp. Envelope. Oh, arc. you're doing that one. I'm wow. I usually do envelope distort. Make with warp. Yeah. Okay, that's how you do it. All right. You can do it that way. Another way you can do it is effect uh, warp arc. Oh, I've never used that one. Yep. It does the same thing. Oh, wow. Much. I've never used that one. How funny. And interestingly, depending on how long your text is, you'll need a different arc percentage right. um, to make it look even. So I'm actually eyeballing this more than going exact for that reason. So we could do something like this, you know, I want to make sure that they're obviously centered. I love that. Let the good sets roll. Family recipes made, made for friends. friends. That's so approachable. That's perfectly on brand. Yeah. Yeah. I absolutely love Ooh. that. And I don't another, even think you need quality ingredients. We don't, but one thing we have to include apparently is where it's brewed. So, or brewed for friends. And then we can say in, wherever. Oh, in California. In, let's say San Clemente, California. Okay. San Clemente is where we grew up and went to high school. It's like this really cute beach town and everybody surfs. Everybody's a surf rat. And um, like our high school, you could take surfing as a PE. Is that crazy or what? Talk about California. Talk about, oh, you know what I could put in that? Blank spaces are GR. Brian Patterson said, I bought myself a copy of Fabus for Christmas and this book is saving me hours of time and energy. Thank you so much. So oh, that's awesome. Brian, that's incredible to hear. That's yeah. Fabus is our book, freelance and business and stuff that we wrote. And it's basically everything we learned about um, design and business mostly. So it's for any creative. It could be for a photographer, a developer, anybody who wants to go out on their own or even just work freelance on the side and you're kind of unsure about how to run a business profitably to where you don't pull your hair out. That's what we wrote this book about. And it's based on our class that we taught at um, Laguna College of Art and Design. Some colleges have this amazing class called Professional Practices where they actually teach you like how to be prepared business-wise hmm. for the real world and your design or creative career. And I think that's so important because um, a lot of times as a designer, you can think, oh, I don't know that much about business. I could never work for myself or, you know, I, I don't have the skills to do freelancing on the side, but you do. If we can do it, you can do it. And, you know, working, um, doing freelance is a great way to just find, um, you know, fun hidden skills that you didn't know you had, you know, um, you can take wow. on projects outside of your normal, you know, business services that you do during the day. You can also just do things that make you happy. Maybe you're not super fulfilled in the work that you're doing for your job. Um, do some of these daily creative challenges that Adobe puts out and see what kind of skills you want to uncover and, and start taking some of those things on freelance. It's, it's like a really great way to just round out your, your services and career. Okay. Yeah. Stephen Overturf says, I can't help but to think of the Californians SNL skit when I hear certain cities oh and San Clemente has to be one of them. Yes. Thanks, Bill Hader and friend Armisen. I love those sketches. They are they're so on so point. It, they're so funny. All right. I think we can. By the way, I'm loving how this is looking. I love the little badge. You're right. It really does make it feel trusted, delicious. Mm -hmm. um, absolutely. There's a quality feel. So we'll put that there. We'll put, we'll match this to this. Oh, that looks good. We're getting somewhere. 
And it's funny, sometimes when I'm mocking things up, um, I feel like, oh, this is too small, this is too small. Um, but that's why I design at size, because it's like, if it's, if you know, like this label is, you know, um, maybe five inches by whatever, five inches, let's just say, you know that you don't want your text to get below the minimum requirements of maybe what, it's probably like eight point fonts. So it may look small in the overall scheme, but you can get pretty small on some of this like extraneous information, like, you know, can size and things like that. So mm -hmm. whenever you're working with a manufacturer, ask them for their templates. They will tell you all the guidelines you need on like, how small can I get on these? on these fonts and um, that's a great way to know like, okay, I'm fine. This isn't too small um, in the grand scheme. Rifka O'Connell says the attempted freeze frames in those SNL Californian sketches. They're so funny. <laughs> Bill Hader is my favorite. <laughs> like that. <laughs> like, but um, oh, it's so, so hilarious. Actually, you know what we can do for these tasting notes? Um, uh oh, we are at 3% battery. It's okay. Yeah, it's plugged in, so it'll be good. Oh, okay. Yeah, just keep working. Um, okay. So. Oh, this is my, it's not working anymore because <laughs> the battery's too low. Um, hmm. oh. All right, so AIM, talk a little bit about well, Chris Porter is asking, do y'all use arc for badges on a circle or do you use type on path? So you use mm. arc, which is funny. Sometimes I use type on path though, yeah. because arc will, uh, it'll actually stretch the letter forms a little bit. Um, and it does like warp things. That's how I feel. Yeah. So that's why I prefer type on path for yeah. sure. Absolutely. Um, it's less likely to mess around with your, um, with your type and, and all that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I've had this thing open. Okay. And uh, I think for our next thing that we'll probably design after this label, we'll tr maybe we'll mock it up a little bit. But then after that, I think we should try a mock-up with a semi-truck. I think that would be so cool. Oh, yeah, that would be And nice. that would be like our delivery truck. And so you're always thinking for your client, a lot of times they'll ask you to do um, a project, but they don't actually know, um, you know, what kind of... Um, what kind of end products they need for this product. But you know, like I know all the places that this logo is going to need to go on in the end. Um, and so you can tell them like, hey, we need to think about the truck design. We need to think about employee badges, um, all those kind of things. And uh, so you're, you're, you're helping them know the end results and, and the end usages. So weird. I don't know why it's not letting me do this. Yeah. And Paco, we're still live, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Sorry, everybody. And your ability. No, it's okay. Is it stalled? <laughs> it's something's happening. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna put the standby screen up and just troubleshoot this a little bit. Our, our computer's stalling out. I don't know what's happening. I'm so sorry. So we'll be right back. everybody harvey said you were working too fast for your computer apparently I, it was just smoking over here you uh burned and it not in a good way <laughs> <laughs> all right we think we have the issue fixed so if we if we do um time out again we'll we'll be right back so um but uh we're rolling with the punches it's 2021 and we are rolling with the punches 
and we're just making it work, right? You got, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah. So right now we've, um, we've already laid out our little badge and now we're doing our flavor profiles or um, our tasting notes would be like the more specific way that you would call it. And this is just allowing people who've never had our beer before, it lets them know like, hey, is this for me? Um, and they will know that because they have the tasting notes. <laughs> and if you like citrus, this beer is for you. Um, and I'm kind of making these up. I'm sure they're not all right, but let's see, hops. Yeah, no, that's good. Sean David in the house, what's up? How are you? Hey. Rachel Miller asks, do you have any advice for being in a creative block? Mm. Absolutely, and it happens to everybody. I mean, geez, it, it, you never outgrow that, I think. And there's there's phases in every career and in life, and, and it's so true. But I think it's, I like to think of it, number one, as it is a job, and I try to just put the time in. Sometimes if you just keep pushing through and just kind of keep iterating, trying new things, you can sometimes push through and you can uncover something if you just kind of keep going and don't get in your head, right? But let's say nothing's working. Sometimes you just gotta let it sit for a day, take a walk and just do something else. And I find if I can accomplish a task that has nothing to do with design or creativity, maybe it's baking, if I can bake a, a batch of cookies and I can accomplish that task, um, that can just change my whole perspective. It can kind of like reinvigorate my confidence a little bit. So. Oh, Matthew Flick says, command S that. <laughs> yeah. Save that baby. There's so much. You could probably close that logo project on that. Yeah, I wonder if that'll even make a difference. If you just exit. Yeah. I know, yeah. Cool. But I, I think it can be really tough. Um, it can be really tough if you're feeling stuck, you know? So I think just go outside, take a walk. And a lot of it is, um, I think a lot of it is giving yourself the time so that when things do go wrong, you have the time and the ability to like let it sit, let it marinate. And it's just so important. Matt Flick's in the house again. Hello, Matt Flick. So good to have you. And Voodoo Bell says, don't forget to save. I know, I'm saving it now. <laughs> and so Jessica Tam asks, do you do your own copywriting? We did talk about that a little bit at the top of the show, but yeah, we, we do do a lot of copywriting sometimes. And sometimes you come, uh, a client comes to you with some copy and you just know that it's not right for the project. And so sometimes we'll just suggest things uh, to the client and um, we'll just say like, hey, I know you have this copy, but maybe for this project, since we are trying to be approachable and fun, um, maybe we use these words and, it, and we'll, we'll give them the, an option and we'll just do it. We'll say like, what if we use this instead? And sometimes they'll say, oh yeah, that's great. Like, I think you're right. And you know, they didn't even know. So sometimes it's just suggesting slight little tweaks can really change the, um, the feel. And Eric Sue says, cookie time. Yep, sometimes you just gotta bake and uh, bake, bake the cares away. <laughs> yes, so true. Robzilla says, pro tip, lowering your screen brightness could assist in battery boost. That's what I just did, yes. Cool, perfect. I did just Thanks, Rob. That. You're the best. Thanks, Rob. Really appreciate it. Really appreciate everyone's patience. It's a rough year and everybody having patience with each other is, is so, so amazing and we love y'all. So I know we asked this yesterday, but what's everybody, uh, what's everybody watching on Netflix? What was that? <laughs> All right, we're gonna go on standby one more time. We'll be right back.
We're back. Hello. We are, we are so sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much for hanging in there. And we're back. And let's just real quick, because there's been a lot of hiccups. Let's just real quick. Let's let's focus on some positivity and let's look at some awesome profiles on Behance. Um, today, our artist spotlight is Maria Brunetti, and we just want to we just want to take a look at her portfolio, take a look at some of the things we like, and just focus on the good things. Absolutely. Okay, so we've got this adorable packaging. Um, and even though this is in a different language, it's interesting. We've already looked at this and we can tell based on a few words and stuff, what this is for. So it's a brand identity pr project for a ramen noodle company. And already the illustrations are so cute, which I love. Um, it's very much that, um, I think it's called kawaii, which is the, um, the Japanese word for things that are cute and warm and fuzzy. Um, and we can use a little more of that. I love that. We could. And I love Look that. Look how friendly the cat is. So the illustration cute. is incredible. So, and what I love the most about this packaging is that it's functional. So not only has um, has she figured out something that looks great, but also it holds your ramen sticks and then it turns into a carrying case, which That's is so cool. brilliant. Anytime you can do something like that and figure out a custom dye line to do custom packaging, I think it really does show uh, a creative side that not all people have. So, right. and it's an attention to detail that's gonna make you stand out from your competition. Totally. So your client is stoked. Yes. So, yeah, love. love and I love the patterns. We were talking about how hard it is to use patterns. She used patterns uh, expertly. Yes. Look at that beautiful little like scalloped pattern at the bottom. It's so beautiful. It ties it all in and it definitely has that um, Asian inspiration. It's just so beautiful. Yeah, it looks delicious, looks warm, inviting, would totally go to this ramen company. 10 for 10 would eat. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she has a little symbolic system here to differentiate different kinds, which is neat. You know, same thing with the pattern. So really well done. So Good job, Maria. One of her projects. Amazing work. And then this is a project, a brand identity project. This is a logo for a Barbie Riccanati. And um, you can see it's got this very organic hand-drawn quality, which I really love like and especially now with screens being as high def as they are i don't think we have to be so strict with rules of like how well will it scale like you know some of it's harder with the hand-drawn things to sometimes think will it scale well but she's done a really good job of picking a kind of hand-drawn brush style that will scale well because it's simple and it's thick it's thick and what she's just done enough variation on the width of the stroke to make it look kind of organic feeling which gives it that kind of like oh of the people you know she's got the, the raised fist for like of the people kind of a, a feel so, and she's got the colorways. Her um, logo guideline is, is really well put together as far as showing, you know, what the different colors are. She's spelled it out. This is really important, sp spelling out the color codes in CMYK, RGB, uh, web hex codes, and then also Pantone. If you don't have a Pantone book and you are doing branding, I would highly recommend getting one because a lot of times you pick colors on your screen, but that's not what they're going to appear like once they get printed, especially if you're doing like consumer packaged goods or anything that's going to be printed out. Eventually you want to pick those from the Pantone book first and then find the good equivalent for the screen. Um, so yeah, so she's got that. And then this is interesting. We were talking about this in the brand guidelines on this right side here. You see, she's got what not to do. I can already tell because it says incorrectos. Do so, not do this with the logo. Don't do it. So she's saying, don't squish it. Don't pull it. Don't add a weird border. <laughs> don't, so true. don't crop it. So yeah. And then she's just shown a lot of great application examples. And this is such a good example of if you just use mockups to your advantage to show just how versatile your logo is, like this project looks amazing because we know, oh my gosh, we can use this logo not only for, you know, our avatar on social, we can use it on totes, on drum kits, on mugs. And you're really showing your client just how versatile and how much use they're going to get out of this logo, right? It's totally. not just this, this random thing in the ether. So I think that's, that's really amazing. And good job, Maria. Thanks so much. So I'm going to jump back into our project on well, setadobe.com. I just got a sync. We switched computers. 
real quick. So I just got to sync some typefaces if they haven't already. Degular. Degular. By Ono Type Co. One of the faves. So I've got some of it synced. Maybe not all of it. Let's see if it's gone over here or if it's figured itself out. Degular display is what I need. All right. So I'm going to jump in here and turn on some more typefaces. All right. So I need... Uh, those ones I've got. Yeah, display. yeah, there we go. Okay. So I'm going to do that one and that one. Cool. All right. So those should sync up in a, in a few minutes. Okay. But we are getting somewhere that I really do like. I think this is going well. And in fact, what I might do um, on this is instead of working on other iterations, I'm going to try and work on what it would look like the colorways. So, I love that. Yeah. So I could see like, does it still look good in the system? Totally. So I'm going to use some of our colors from up here. Actually, I want to use. Yeah, let's try that orange one. But I think even a little bit oranger. I like the sand, but. I like the sand Oh, actually, color. now that you've applied it, it does look really good. It does. It, it looks delicious. It does way. look, it looks really good. And I wonder what it looks like with black on that, on that um, off-white too. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, like Yeah. So let's go to regular. It's not. Well, anyways, let's pick something else. Yeah, maybe Helvetica or Din. Helvetica. Oh. <laughs> oh, actually, Din looks really good. Look at that. Din does look good. Yeah, I like what that. What about? Oh, I'm I'm laughing at you and now it looks really good on there. Let's just do it. Actually, that looks really good. All right, so let's do that. And then we will change these as well. So AE asks, would you guys consider contrast a secret to good design? Yes, I think so. I think um, contrasting of styles, um, obviously if, you know, uh, if everything looks kind of to the same, um, there's no variation, there's no excitement, right? You want to have a little moment of unexpected excitement and delight for your audience. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, using contrast in colors in, um, and in, you know, font pairings is a great way to do that. Joseph Bullard wants to know, do you always work with a light interface color? I know your, your interface looks like it's from like 2000. Does it? I yeah. Don't know. I like it lighter because then if I pull things off the page, uh, it's not too, I don't feel like it's like so far off. It's just kind of like a more fluid experience. I, I like it. I'm not sure why. Okay. So we're getting somewhere. I might, well, no, that looks good like that. Yeah. That looks really nice. Just a little more space. And you know what else I really like on a can is when I think um, Coca Cola used to do this when they changed up the recipe and then had to come back to the classic. <laughs> or on the top, it would say classic um, or like the original. And I always think that's cool when there's like a little banner around the top. So maybe we could try that too some sort of banner on the top of the label. Mm -hmm. um, that's another thing to think about. I always like to think how it's going to compare with other cans on the shelf, especially if we're trying to tell our client, hey, we're going to make you something that stands out on the shelf. Um, people are going to take note when they're walking down the aisle. That it won't blend in with the sea of sameness, right? So I like to take note of what people are doing well, how we could make it our own, um, and you know what we definitely don't want to do because it's overplayed. Totally. All right, let me figure out. Add. This is a Jen, you're not alone. Quite a few people in the chat also use the light interface. That's, oh, I love it. Yeah. That's so surprising. So uh, Shaylee Seaver says she's with you. Solidarity. Steven Overturf. Um, he likes to use a white background, but dark for the framing. Me too. That's what mm. I like to do. But I did change mine from gray, which is standard, to white. Actually, I could do this. As, except for those don't want to change colors. Well, okay. So let's do... Actually, I kind of want to pull in some of these colors from that. But if I... Actually, let's say that was the green one and this one was the, uh, you know, the Belgian or whatever. Okay. Um, let's call it a Belgian white. Yeah. So um, I think I'm going to add really quickly over this, like a little transparency overlay oh. to try and adjust that a little more to the can, if that makes sense. Just as a cheat, just to see if it works. Yeah, to see if I might go in later onto those um, images and kind of make them more color coded to the, um, you know, the color way that we have going right. on. to the can. So let's see what it looks like to screen it. It's Chrissy not. Atanasova says, I don't know why, but the water photo reminds me a lot of the painting Starry Night. That's so true. Oh, we, interesting. We're accidentally using Van Gogh colors and I kind of love that. Yeah. That's awesome. Actually, I kind of like that. That's kind of neat. It kind of makes it a little bit more unique to that, although it could. And it definitely has um, 
it definitely has a little bit of, of like a 70s like um hippy dippy vibe, <laughs> you know also the weird thing about these overlays is that sometimes if you use colors you would never think to use with a certain transparency mode yeah it'll change the image in ways you didn't even under i like expect. that last one was, oh but the blue is kind of a cool yeah, contrast the blue kind but i think of i liked the other one closer yeah. like that okay mm. it's weird but like in a good way yeah in a good way yeah so maybe try that for now just for now and then I'm going to kind of guess at these colors um, to kind of get some color profile. Um, and maybe there, what if we use our secondary palette that we created? Or are yeah, we, are we defining that right now? It, that's what I'm kind of thinking. It's like, I'll make the color based on what the, the note is, you know? So like, let's say this is like wheat, because okay. you're definitely going to have notes of wheat. In fact, it might be like, like extraneous to even say it if it's called a wit beer. But uh, we'll right, and then you've got like the now. light golden for the wheat. That makes sense. And then we could have honey. In, for sure, there's citrus notes citrus. in it. I know that. I looked that up. And uh, we'll make this even more of a like an orange. Like oh, a bright, wowy. Pop out against that. Like Nickelodeon orange. <laughs> I don't remember Nickelodeon. Oh, Nick at night. I used to love those shows where people would get slimed or gacked. Yeah. Um, like what was that mm. one? It was like Temple of Doom or something. Oh man, Th those were some great shows back then. Totally. And what was that show? It was like SNL for kids. I think it was called All That. Yes, All That. And um, I forgot about Ke that. Keenan and Kel also, but Kel has, wait, is it Kel or Keenan? No, Keenan. Keenan Thompson has somehow gone on every amazing um, variety show. It's pretty impressive. Really? Yeah, I mean, he went from SNL or he went from. Oh, right. All That. I, I get what you're it's saying. Uh, sketch shows. Yes, sketch yep. shows, right. Okay. Rivka Citrus. asks, have you ever completed a project that you really yes. didn't like the end result of, where you just give it into the client and never post it on your website? Oh yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> I think everybody goes through that, yeah. you know, um, at the end of the day, the client's paying you. Um, and sometimes you have to count your battles of, okay, this client is just not going to trust me. And in the end of the day, I want to give them what they want. And, um, this may just not be a portfolio piece that I'm happy with. And I've definitely been there. Now there's been moments where the client was actually just even not delightful to work with where I'm like, I think we need to part ways. Like I'll give you whatever work we agreed on up to this point and we'll both go our separate ways, you know, best of luck to you. But I, don't, I think this is where we part paths, you know, mm -hmm. but, um, but usually I try to make it work. And if, if it's something that I think still will work for them successfully, it's just not particularly what I was hoping for. I'll still do it for them. And I'm glad that they're happy and I'm glad that hopefully it will work. Um, and I just won't put it on my portfolio mm -hmm. and uh, listen, we've all been there. And I can tell you even big names like, John Contino or Aaron Draplin have definitely been there too. So Brian Patterson says, remember when they had Ice Cube perform on all that classic? What? I know, dude, I Nickelodeon used that, to be but... the stuff. They had all sorts of celebrities and stuff. All right, so I'm gonna actually send that a little. Okay, so, and then let's kind of- Robzilla says he's all done drawing for the day, proof sent. Client work done. Now time to go down, wind down with some Pokemon Go. I didn't Ooh. know we were still doing that. We're still doing Pokemon Go. Let's do it. I gotta call my cousin. He used to do Pokemon Go all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna open up the, um, this actually is looking good though. I kind of want to see. No, oh, I think it looks amazing. And I can, I love the idea, like how it looks next to each other. Mm -hmm. Imagine in the green room tasting room, which of course we have to have a tasting room with awesome signage, awesome menus. Yeah. And these are all lined up on a shelf in the, oh, in the sure. rainbow color palette. Yes. It would be incredible. All yeah. of the cans on different shelves in the, in the brewery um, refrigerators. Mm -hmm. oh, I can see it. So I like to imagine those scenarios and then I'll try to find photos online, whether it's a stock photo or whether I go in and just take a picture, like a really bad picture of the client's actual brewery tasting right. room. And then I'll just mock up. I'll say, not only does this look great individually, look mm -hmm. how great it works in a system. And I think when a lot of designers are like, how do I get bigger projects? How do I, how do I start to step up my game as far as what clients are willing to hire me for? I think the biggest thing you can do is show in your portfolio work that you can build a system, not a one-off, a system. So if you're thinking about doing a personal project for fun, if you wanna like get better at typography per se, so you're doing 365 days of type. Wait, no, that's too much. <laughs> Let's think about our sanity. You're doing Wait, 10 days of type. 
show how it works in a system together. Pick something that is some cohesive um, overall project goal that can tie everything in together. Like this year, I was thinking we've been doing a lot of movie logos recently, title treatments for like Disney and 20th century and things like that. And I was thinking it'd be great to recap my favorite shows of 2020 by doing some title treatments. And so by doing a project that says 20, 20 of my favorite shows reimagined for 2020, um, movie titles reimagined. Mm -hmm. That's my theme. I'm showing how I can do a system of ideas and not just one-offs, you know? Um, so I think that's a great way to start showing, showing that you're a strategist, not just a designer, not just yeah. a plug and chug. So think about ways that you can do that. Even if a client, um, sometimes it's worth it if you're just starting out, if a client hasn't even hired you to do something, but it's quick for you to pitch, um, you can just say like, hey, I was in there and I know you only hired me to make you one label, but what if we did a unique label and color system for each beer can? Mm -hmm. I really quickly mocked this up. What do you think? You're showing, and then you can show that in your portfolio and you're gonna get paid for that work eventually because people can see it and it's real. It's amazing what people can't imagine when they're not creative, if they can't see it in your portfolio work. So true. Chris Porter says, Ooh, I love that movie title idea. I know we've been loving doing these movie logo projects. It's been so much fun. And it's like, what is, what is bigger than having your, a logo of yours on a movie? That would oh be incredible. Gosh. So far, all the movies we've worked on, none of the, our actual like pitches or it, it's not pitches, it's um, explorations. Mm -hmm. um, Cause it wasn't for free. Um, none of our explorations has been the final. So my goal is to have a final movie logo picked. Right. So um, Picklit Editor says, why are my clients only paying me $500? That's not good. How do I get my prices up? <laughs> so I think um, everybody always wants to know, how do I charge a little bit more? Well, like we kind of talked about earlier, um, pit, or presenting a system instead of just a one-off to somebody, if somebody comes to you and says, I just need a logo. The reality is they don't just need a logo. They just don't know all the other pieces that they need. So a lot of times you have to look at, okay, look at their website, look at what they've got or ask questions if maybe they don't have a website yet and they're not very established yet. And just say, okay, like what are the usage scenarios of this logo? Where mm -hmm. are you gonna put it? If they say, oh, we have a we have a restaurant, we have menus, we have, these are all things that you can say, why don't you let me design those things? Um, you don't need to do that yourself. It's gonna be hard. It won't look fluid in the overall system. You want it to be cohesive. You want it to be all go together, don't you? And of course they'll say, yes, I do want it to yes. be cohesive and holistic. And then you say, well, listen, um, I know you only said you wanted a logo, but I'm gonna give you a deal. If you book me for logo, menu, signage, and t-shirt design, I'll give you 10% off if you book it all with me and we can make payments so that it's easy for you. Mm -hmm. And this is a great way to start getting bigger, bigger jobs, better paying jobs and better portfolio posts. So. so Brian Patterson asks a really interesting question. Have you ever designed for a client whose culture you weren't familiar with? Yes. I'm designing for a Taekwondo school and I had to do a ton of research prior to starting the project. Mm -hmm. I mean, every, I think this is why a lot of people um, specialize in industries because there is so much work that goes into it. If you're working on brand identity, which is what we're doing today, totally. this is brand identity work. Um, when you're working on brand identity work, you have to learn everything there is to know about your client and their business so that you can give them solutions that it will actually work. If it doesn't convert, if it doesn't work, it's not a good solution, even mm -hmm. if it looks like the prettiest thing in the world. So yeah, you're right. You have to learn about your client's business. And um, it, there's a lot of research that goes into that. And when we first started our business, we weren't charging for that stage of research. We were just doing all this research and um, we were just charging them for a logo. So again, that's a way to get your prices up by saying, hey, we need to do a discovery phase. We need to do a research phase to make sure that we are finding the best solution for you. And a lot of times clients, you know, may think I don't need that. So we, we actually include that with our logo and we say, sorry, we only do logo phases with the discovery session. It's better for you. And this is how we can ensure that you get the best solution. Exactly. So yeah, it's always a research, but that is interesting. I'm working with a um, Hebrew uh, charity right now. And so everything we do, we have to consider the cultural implications, not just of how we perceive color or type or even just the orientation or stock images. So um, luckily they've put me in touch with a few of the partners in Israel and uh, who are English speaking. And so everything we do, I, I kind of, they're my, my user test group that I have to run by and be like, okay, like, you know, let me know about anything that I, I am not yet aware of. And it also involves a lot of research, like you said. Rob says, big facts. <laughs> 
We've got some yes and amens in the chat. I'm <laughs> so sweet. Mm. Rifka asks, can you do just packaging design and have another studio do brand identity? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We actually have a lot of clients that come to us with brand identity already established, but they need to flesh it out. Like maybe they've they've had another studio set the logo and the, the brand guidelines, mm -hmm. but now they need to build that out into all the different things for their consumer good or for their product. And so that's when we hop in and we'll take over and, and take it from there. So there's definitely scenarios. You can you can do whatever you want. You can set the parameters of your services and um, that's the glory of working for yourself. Exactly. <laughs> there's a lot of down downsides to working for yourself, but there's also a lot of upsides and that's definitely one of them. Yes. So I realized that this mock-up includes the can all the way to the lips. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cheat and put a color bar on the back here. Oh, nice. And match it to that background that we already got going on. Cool. We don't have to redesign it all for now because I just want to know. Um, oh, it's right here, right? Yeah, and it's right there. there. Cool. I wonder why that eyedropper wasn't working. Very strange. But I, I love jumping into to Photoshop and just throwing it on a mock up. Mm -hmm. And okay, you can immediately <laughs> see if it's working. Yeah. yeah, just like how it comes to life from just being this flat thing where you're like, okay, this is kind of cool. But then you see it on a can and you're like, oh, no, no, this is really cool. Yeah. And I think scooch it all the way to the right so you can see like what if the can more. was, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes. I'm liking it. Okay. What do we think, chat? What do we think? I will say if I saw a beer with hints as to what it would taste like, oh. even though like, especially if we're going after younger drinkers, it's yeah. like, they don't know. They you just know. started drinking. They were drinking They're what unsure. did Andrew Hawk Rattle say? They were drinking <laughs> chocolate milks and vodka. So like Andrew <laughs> Hawk Rattle. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah, okay. So what I would probably do then is apply all of those cans to mock-ups and for the proof at least, you know? Um, and to be honest, I might actually go in and edit that photo a little bit more in Photoshop. Um, but yeah, for now, I think that that stage is, is good enough. Oh, I think it looks great. Yeah. yeah, I love that. And you know what we could do now is work on a coaster. Oh, I'd love that. Because a coaster is a really cool point if you're doing some sort of like drink company. Um, because say it's a new beverage, it's just entered the market and um, it's, nobody knows about it. <laughs> so what a lot of beer companies will do, and we've worked with a, c a company that did this, was they'll get a bunch of coasters made and they'll just drop them off to all the different um, restaurants um, or even to stockists, of course, people that carry their beer on tap or mm -hmm. carry their beer as an option on the menu, but even people that don't carry it yet. It's like, hey, here's some free coasters, you know? And it just gets the word out and people are seeing this and saying, huh, green room, this is a cool coaster and maybe they take a picture of it you know you're just getting getting your logo getting your branding getting your presence in their space getting in their space getting it trying to carve a little space in their memory for you and your brand and chad Banky says the logo looks even better in context that's what we like to hear the worst is when you make a logo, you love it. Then you apply it and it doesn't work at all. Right. That's why you always have to apply it to mock-ups or contextualize it. Um, I can't tell you how many times that's happened to us. So, yeah. So I'm almost thinking, you know, the coaster, most coasters these days, I think are circle. But yeah. You know how there's like those old school ones that yes. are rounded, rounded corners? square. I kind of like that working class vibe of a square. <laughs> I love how I'm imbuing all this meaning into a square coaster. <laughs> like, you see, we're working class. There. We're blue collar. We're blue we're collar. Square. We're square. <laughs> but to be honest, the little icon you made is it's more optimal for square. Yeah, we could even put this stacked one. Let's try those both in there. You know, what would be cool is to be able to deliver a set of um, coasters to a, um, you know what I mean? That way, I love different that. Different people could get different yes, ones. Yes, I love and that. And yeah, again, like, showing that system. People love to see a system. Voodoo Val says, I'm going to be totally honest, ladies. I did not know how I felt about this image of the waves at first, but I can honestly say that this is one of the coolest beer cans I've ever seen. I'm oh, sad wow. it's not real. <laughs> All right. After we retire from design, we're going to start a private investigation service and a beer company. It's Voodoo Val knows my love language, which is just um, compliments. <laughs> and I appreciate Praise. it. Praise. Praise. So funny. So obviously we could go just like, you know, so heavy on just like, you know, straight it's, up branding. Yeah, but just establishing your brand presence. So we could do one like that with maybe our let the good sets roll, but we'll have to like readjust that mm -hmm. to fit our sizing. Oh, yeah, Ricky Haggerty says square coasters are what all the cool kids are putting their drinks on now. Exactly. You heard it here first. This is what I was talking about the other day about how when you option drag something in equally, it will never do it proportionally like you think. Look, 
Right. I mean, right? Is the it curves, just me? Yeah. It looks like it's more those rounded corners. Yeah, yes. Which is why um offset path is always offset path. It's the way to go. Path. Okay. Negative preview. Let's see, let's put it in like and I like that too because we had a piece on our mood board that had like um kind of like the Kodak color bar stripes, which is so wonderfully nostalgic. Everyone loves those bold color blocks. So we're kind of bringing a little bit of that in, like color swashes, color blocks, and I really like that. So weird, my eyedropper. I don't want my work. It's being very naughty. Okay, so let me go to my Pathfinder and I'll put it all into one shape and see if there's something wrong, if that might be what's causing it. Okay, well, sure. We'll try a different color maybe. Maybe we could do the orange. I think it's only working with swatches for some reason, but that's okay. Well, oh, not even that. Okay. It's going to be black. Oh, it might be a transparency <laughs> thing. No, it's it's normal. Ah, well, here we are. Okay, so that's going to stay black. Um, I'm going to copy that and put. Oh, Chris Porter says feels very racing vibes. I like that. Like I race car vibes. I do like that because when yeah. you go to the bar, you're you know usually watching sports on the. Well, no. They have, well, they have sports playing. <laughs> have they made, um, you know how they have like cat cafes? Have they made cat bars yet? Is that a thing? Yeah, they do oh, have cat cafes. Cat no, bars. I know. <laughs> cat so bars. But, uh, I like, I miss trivia night. I never got to do it. Like I have never done a trivia night actually in a bar. And now, oh, good sense, now it's on lockdown and that's a bar. Javier Sola says greenroom.com has been taken since two, 2005. Oh, yeah, cool. we did check the trademark, which I always try to do before we pick a name for a client. I mean, I definitely do it if we're doing for a client, but uh, this is fictional today. But um, I always, before I present an idea of a name to a client, I always make sure that there's some sort of web address that is good. You know, maybe it's not greenroom.com, but maybe it's greenroom.beer. There's so many different dots now. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do .com. There's tons of other stuff. So um, I always check the availability of handles, websites, things like that. That's a really good point. Great point, Javier. Oh, good work. Whatever. J. Mark Bowden says, I want to see that green room text embroidered on a patch and sewn on a classic work jacket. Yes. Work jackets for all the drivers, all the beer taster makers, everybody. Everybody. But I like this idea of keeping it simple. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it kind of does look, I mean, <laughs> just as simple as all this is. It's yeah. kind of interesting. Something too that I was thinking about for the van. Um, this just begs to be repeated. Is it just me? Oh, but then in the different colors. <laughs> yeah, in the different colors. Totally. I kind of like that idea of for something. I don't know what. Or even like, um, you know, for the keg wrap or, or something like that. This could be like a cool, Oh, the keg tape. The That's, ke yeah. Oh, the keg tape, yeah. Yeah, the keg tape. So that could be kind of cool as well. Um, good sets roll. And you know what else we could... And it is interesting because a lot of coasters are... Um, well, if you're thinking about, I don't know, I've seen some that are letter pressed. I've seen people go wild. Oh, like yeah, you could almost like duplicate. Oh, like, that this could, be, could cool. be embossed. And then, um, and if you ever want to like just simulate embossing, like I know they do have like 3D effects, but sometimes it kind of slows things down. And, and maybe if you just copy it from a different place, maybe it's just that one. That's true. Let's see here. You could just, yeah, grab that one. Let's see what this one looks like. But yeah, I love the idea of like using the effects of embossing. Some text is um, just regular printed, you mm -hmm. know, digital printed, and then we emboss something, some hidden thing in the back. Yeah, we could do. Ricky Haggerty says, I feel like this would look really cool on a matchbox too. Oh, yes. And yeah. that's actually the perfect, um, it's a great it's idea layout. for um, also just something that's like you could leave at bars and people would pick up and, you know, that's where they're going to try it right. and, you know, they'll get to know it and like it. Totally. All right, so let's pretend that that's embossed by just, it's every time that I that's, yeah. live trace it. So let me just bring it back here. Okay. Let's try that one. Because I really want to use this for the um, emboss. emboss it. Because the other one's too wide. Um, so it's not working. Okay, well, it's just not going to change color. Why don't we try doing, <laughs> neither will that. We could try bringing the can. What if the can is on the, coaster and it cuts off from the bottom and enters into so it would the, be like a full print yeah coaster for color for color digital you think baby yeah give it a try um because we have the to... we have it over here so you're just saying like, like maybe that we clipping mask that in and it's popping in from the bottom i don't know just an idea you never know what's gonna work and what's not gonna work until you try it mm-hmm 
Okay, Sarah Diggy says, so you do take care of printing for the client? Actually, sometimes, sometimes yeah. we do, sometimes we don't. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, if a client comes to me and they've already been working in the food and beverage industry for a while, they already know the manufacturers they like to work with. They already have working relationships with those manufacturers. Mm -hmm. And so um, far be it for me to tell them they need to switch and use somebody else. So I'll usually just work directly with them. I'll deliver the files, but I'll let them kind of handle all that, um, those kind of things. But I have helped clients with printing as well. Um, it's just the worst when, you know, you've, you haven't worked with a client for five years and they keep emailing you to get 250 more business cards. That can be a pain <laughs> in the butt. So I used to do that when we were early on, but I've, I've since realized like it, sometimes it's better to just let the client handle those things. Um, it, it's less hassle for you. And, um, That's true. yeah. Which I kind of like. So we have about 10 minutes left. It's 1.45. We get off here in about 10 minutes. Um, so maybe we can recap and just show, once you finish this coaster, show a little bit of what we accomplished in the last two days. I feel like we got so much done. We've got coasters. We've got uh, beer can labels. We've got type and color picked already. What? That takes me usually at least two days. Yeah. And um, we finished the logo. We did a lot. We've covered a lot of ground. We've done it together. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty proud of what we did. Okay. We yeah, get this in the right area. Totally. It's going to pop right. And but I really actually like this. Dare I? Oh, there we go. Oh, dare hey. I say you added an outer glow? I know. I know. And generally it's generally, bad. I'm like, generally that's not the outer glow, glow, but you could, if you do it so subtle, no one will ever know. Uh, Stylize. No, top one. Outer glow. It's been so long since you used it. You didn't even remember where it was. I know. <laughs> I haven't used it since when we were making ads <laughs> for clients. Okay. So if I preview it too much, maybe I always go like 20. Oh, that's pretty good. But I mean, because it's so dark, yeah, yeah this might actually be perfect. David German wants to know, where will we see the final product? Don't worry, I will get this up on our Behance stat. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna finish, Jen and I are gonna finish some mock-ups, maybe do like a six pack, maybe just a simple six pack, um, but we'll definitely be posting it on Behance. So give us a follow. Um, we're Hoodsfoot Design. We are Amy and Jen Hood, your, your uh, trusted hosts for the day and just brand identity designers based out of California. We're on Behance, we're on Twitter, we're on Instagram. Um, definitely keep in touch. If you have any questions about what we went over, hit us up. We'd love to talk to you. I'm realizing too, we probably need beer as a descriptor on a version of the logo. Like it sure. doesn't have to be on all of them, but as silly as it is, I think, <laughs> you know, yeah. you just want it to. Yeah, you, you wanna make sure there's no, no confusion. No confusion. This is not a seltzer. This is not a hard seltzer. They're huge right now, but. So if we do that. And Donovan Johnson says that water coaster. I know, I actually love that I do water too. image. And it, it really does bring the California vibe. Like there's no doubt. Like this and you know how that the whole 90s like grunge vibe is coming back? Yeah. Where everything's like kind of dissonant and a bit weird. Um, I think it kind of appeals to that kind of Gen Z mentality. Totally. So Brent Ellis says, remember Hoods, dynamite comes in small packages. I think he means that we're, we may be five of one, but we pack a punch with our design, our design powers. <laughs> Thank you. And I love how just like basic oh, I love that. Is. No, no, I, I, I love it. And it also speaks to the brand system of these little yeah. um, tasting notes, which I, I think could be something that we could be known for at Green Room. We, because it's me ours now, you. apparently. It's me and you, we're, we're starting it. it next year. We're doing it. Um, so something fun that we could do. And just after you're done with that, show us what we accomplished today as well. Oh yeah, for sure. I 100% will. Let the good sets roll. But yeah. Oh yeah, let the good sets roll. Our amazing copy. It might be too spaced out right there, to be honest. Yeah, I think so. Um, so we could do- Boston translation a bit. Just zero. And it's so funny. I love when people put things in quotes that Me don't too. really need to be in quotes, but there's something about it Supposedly. that says this is local made, you know, like it's like they don't really know how to use these things it and, and why it's important. Let I heard from someone, let the good sets roll. Yeah. So you heard it here first. Here. Let the good sets roll. It cracks me up though. Um, like we could put um, brewing. Oh, I could do the brewing for friends out of, you know. There we go. Uh, brewed. Brewed in California four friends. I would of course make sure that this is all centered. Centered and delightful. Whoops. Love that. There we go. Yeah. Those align tools are my best friends. Sometimes I'll see people just eyeballing things. Don't ever <laughs> 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 you. 
<laughs> I love the Align tools. They are my best friends. Actually, that green room uh, repeating thing too could be like for, um, you know, in gift boxes when you have Absolutely. like custom like tissue paper yeah. and packaging and stuff. We could yeah. do like beer of the month clubs where, um, you know, this could be part of the packaging situation. Totally. That. Even, oh, and I love branded tape. I think branded <gasps> tape is the easiest way to snazz up, especially if you're doing a lot of shipments. Shipments. So let's say that there was some sort of a, a beer gift club. Like this repeating logo would be the perfect branded tape which you could get at like Sticker Mule. That's where um, we get ours for our packaging. But you can see like, if you got this in the mail and you saw uh, Green Room and you you just know what's coming. Oh, you're so excited. Um, you're immediately thirsty. It, and it just snaps up a box so nicely. So we oh, could do I it in our, tape. in our, yeah, I love that. And then what we could do is alternate the colors in our brand colors. So we could do it in a little bit of white. Of course, I really want to make these different colors. Okay. <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm going in. Um, but anyways, so I'm just kind of finishing this up. But yeah, tune in because we'll post our Behance. Um, and if you're following us there, then we'll show you the final product. The final result. Of, um, you know, what we were doing. <laughs> Jermaine Robinson says, if life was as easy as the align tool. Oh my gosh, it's so true. But thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Thank you so, so much, chat. We had the best time hanging out with you all, making fun designs. And definitely stay tuned. Um, XD is next, Creative Challenge. And um, it's been it's been such a blast. So thank you. Thank you. We hope you have an awesome day. And um, if you want to see what we worked on yesterday, there's the live recaps of every Adobe Live that they do. They have recaps for on Behance. So I watch them all the time. I love them. <laughs> Ahmed says, good work. Thank you, Ahmed. Appreciate that. I right know. I live for that kind of thing. We love that kind of feedback. All right. So I'm just, I'm just on our last few minutes, just finishing up the tape here. Because why not? Why not get one more thing done? Heck yeah. I do kind of like that, you Ooh. know. Oh, I'm really loving all these greens. Yeah, I love it too. So you can imagine that going along a, a box on the seam, you know, you could have just a standard regular box and, and that would be like an amazing cap to it. So what we've done today is um, we took the logo, we made it some different orientations for it. We figured out our color palette, which I, I have adjusted a little. So I'm going to be fixing this to make sure it matches. And in fact, I might bring this into that hunter green. Oh, yeah. Oh, so I'll go yeah. ahead and fix that. Love that. Um, once my eyedropper is working. Good idea. And then we figured out what our type is going to be. I'm actually going to, once we get off here and I can sync Degular, I'm going to get it back to Degular. I think that was a little bit more personality driven than Helvetica, but Helvetica for now is a good substitute. So I've got my type specimen page, which lets my my uh, client know what the, their, their typography is. And that's our basic package for our brand identity. We at least do logo type and color. So um, those are the things that we always show them. And then in this specific scenario, we also included for them a can design, which would easily like be able to be um, adjusted to like a carrying case or a van, which I'm probably gonna work on next. And what I'm doing is I'm um, carrying over this image asset into coasters. I mean, once you have these building blocks, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I, yeah. I almost feel like I'm cheating by just doing something this simple, but it's like, it works, you know? And, that's and you're the creating power of brand branding. recognition. Exactly. So never feel bad if it's this easy. Sometimes it is, and that's okay. Especially if you're doing custom type, that took long Embrace enough. it if it actually works easy, because no doubt the next, the next project won't be that easy. So yeah. take the wins when they come. Yeah. So I'll probably finish by mocking that up on um, some tape eventually. And then also I got this um, Ooh, van, van mock -up. So, and you know what I'm seeing? All green van. I know. I think we have to really lean into the green. Lean in. <laughs> Sarah um, says, hello, Sarah. You're a little bit late, but guess what? You can watch the replay and Adobe XD Sarah, Challenge we're so glad you came next. though. But hello Anyways. and welcome. And I'll also do this mock up because someone brought up having a green room tasting room. I think that's brilliant. So at least we need to put the green room tasting room on this uh, mock-up of the sign. Let's Amazing. See. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, again, I'm Amy Hood. This is Jennifer Hood. We've so enjoyed our time with you, technical fault difficulties aside, and thanks so much and have a great day and shine on. Bye everyone. <laughs>